In this example problem, we're going to use response 2000 to develop a moment curvature plot for the section shown here. Response 2000 is a layered section analysis program that is freely available online. So I'll show you how to find it and then we'll work through how to use it. You can see we're given the, the section properties uh, for the section and we're also uh, given some of the material properties that we'll need. Uh, Response 2000 also uses the Ramberg-Osgood stress-strain relationship for our, our pre-stressing, so we're going to use these uh, coefficients. And you can see our end goal is this moment versus curvature plot um, for this section. The first thing that we need to do is download Response 2000. If you just search for Response 2000, typically Response 2000 will be one of the first links. Uh, it was developed by Evan Bentz from the University of Toronto, so you'll see University of Toronto after that. We'll click on the link and it'll bring us to the Response 2000 homepage here. If we click on Download Response 2000 and then enter in some brief information and click Submit, we'll come, uh, a, a prompt will come up and allow us to download Response 2000 on our computer. After downloading Response 2000 and installing it on your computer, you can open it and we're ready to move forward with our example. We'll, I'll start by changing our units. Uh, I, I use US customary units in my class, so we'll switch by clicking on Options, Options, Preferences, and under General, we can switch between metric and US customary units. So we'll click on US customary for, for our, our class. Next, we can go to Define and we can click on Quick Define. Under Quick Define, we can add some general information. So this is going to be our example one. I'm the one analyzing it, and I can enter in some general information for our, our material properties. Our concrete strength is 5,000 PSI. Our yield strength for our steel, um, we don't have any, any non-pre-stressed steel in, in the problem. So we'll, we'll keep that at 60, and we'll keep 60 for our 60 KSI for a transverse um, steel yield as well. We have half inch diameter, um, 270 KSI low relaxation strands. So we're going to keep that there, but we can use a uh, um, 610 strand as well. We can click on next, and then we can start defining our section. You can see under quick define, we have a number of different sections that we can choose from. Uh, we're going to stick with a rectangular section, and we have a 12 inch width by 24 inch height. So we'll uh, move forward with those. Next, we can modify our, our number of top non-pre-stress reinforcement. We don't have any bars in the top, so we'll leave that at zero. And uh, our, non, our bottom non-pre-stress reinforcement, we also have no bars there, or, or no non-pre-stress reinforcement in the bottom. So then we'll move forward. Our last step, we can define the stirrups. Um, so it, it does allow you to do a, a shear analysis. Um, we're not going to do that in this example, so we're going to keep that as none. And finally, we can define our bottom tendons. We have three pre-stress, uh, three half-inch tendons, and our initial delta epsilon p was uh, defined in the problem example or in the problem statement as six millistrain. Um, so we'll change that and click finish. You can see it now gives us the depth of the section and the width of the section and some information on our strands. So half inch, three half inch strands with a six milli strain, um, locked in strain. Uh, and you can see our, our concrete and our pre-stressing curves. Um, so now we can walk through some of our other definitions. Um, we can next go to our material properties and we're going to modify our um, F prime C. So you can see uh, some of these are, are auto-defined. We can pick some uh, two different base curves, um, compression softening and tension stiffening curves as well. We're just gonna leave those as, as is. Um, but we were given a uh, peak strain here of 2.25 milli strain. So we're gonna change this to 2.25. And then click OK and we'll save our changes. So next we need to, uh, or we can check our pre-stress reinforcement. 
So here you can see we're using uh, the ramberg osgood stress strain relationship for our um, pre-stressing. And we were given an A, a B, and a C coefficient. And you can see that um, the A, B, and C that we were given is the same as, as we have here. Um, we can also, if we wanted to change the elastic modulus of our strands, um, here it, it's auto-defined as 29,000. Um, but we'll switch that to um, 28,500. And we'll click Modify. And then we'll click OK. And we can keep going down our, our Define tab. Uh, next, if we wanted to, we can change our concrete section. The concrete section allows you to switch between different basic shapes. There are some standard shapes defined. And then you can also do a user-defined shape, where you specify the, um, the elevation and the width of the section at that elevation. And you can create some pretty complex shapes using the user-defined uh, shape setting. Um, we're, we have a rectangular section, so we're not going to make any changes here. So we're just going to click Cancel. Uh, next, we could define our transverse reinforcement. Um, so we don't have any transverse reinforcement, so we're not going to define that any further. Um, our longitudinal reinforcement, we don't have any non-pre-stressed longitudinal reinforcement, so we're going to not make any changes there. And then finally, our, our tendons. You can see um, it, the program automatically defines this, or, or the, the tendon distance from bottom as 1.8 inches. From our problem definition, we see that our section has an overall height of 24 inches, but the depth from the top to the centroid of our strands is only 20 inches. So the distance from the bottom is going to be 4 inches in our case. So we'll have 4, uh, four inches there, um, and we'll click Modify. We're modifying this layer of, of uh, pre-stressing, so then that layer will have um, four inches there. If we wanted to define an additional layer, what we would do is we would change this to a, a different name, we would change the properties, and then we would click Add. And that would allow us to add additional layers. So you use Modify to modify the um, layer that's selected, and you use Add to add new layers. Um, we can also change the, the pre-strain, we can change the strand size, and we can also change the, uh, the tendon type. So um, all right, we don't have anything else here, so we're going to click, uh, we'll, I guess, cancel. And we can just make sure that, uh, oh, our, our change wasn't changed. So we'll need to do four inches here. We'll click Modify, and then we'll click OK. All right, and you can see our, our strands moved up. So we know that that uh, up in the, um, the graphic of, of our cross section. So we know that the change was made. Um, if we wanted to next, we can add some loads. Uh, so it allows you to add uh, axial loads, moments, and shears, uh, either constant or, or incremental. We're not going to add any loads. We can also add time, time dependent effects, um, some detailed thermal shrink and shrinkage strains, strain discontinuity, and other member properties. We're only going to do a sectional response uh, in this example, so we're just going to go to Solve, and we'll click on our sectional response, and then we'll come to this this graphic. So uh, this is the the nine cross section plots uh, option for viewing the results, and uh, you can see that we have the moment curvature plot here, and then here are the nine different plots uh, for the moment curvature plot that's a uh, moment curvature point that's selected. Um, so at this point that's selected with a, a load of 190.5 kip feet, uh, we can see the longitudinal strain at the top, negative 3.34 um, uh, compression, millistrain compression, and at the bottom of the section 24.09 uh, millistrain tension. Uh, so we can see the, the strains, we can see the, our shrinkage and thermal strains, we can see the stress in our longitudinal reinforcement. And uh, so this would be the average stress, and this is the um, local stress at, at a crack. And uh, then we can also see the um, axial load and moment at this point, the internal force, forces, compression and tension, and the, the longitudinal um, concrete stress. 
Um, if we would select different points, you can see that all these values change. So we can select our different points to figure out, um, you know, right, what our strains or concrete stresses or stresses in our reinforcement at uh, different points. The other way to view the results is if we can click, we can click on this single plot where it gives us our moment curvature plot as the uh, main diagram, and then we can select uh, other plots to show alongside it. So I'm going to, to copy the data from here into an Excel spreadsheet um, just so that I can um, manipulate it and, and kind of customize the graph that I'm going to make. So to do that, I'm going to right click on our plot. I'm going to click on Copy Chart Data. And then I'm going to open up the Excel sheet to continue this example. Now we can open up Excel, and we can paste our data in our Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can see that in, in each one of these cells, we have um, our curvature and moment uh, right next to each other in one cell so we need to, to break them up into multiple cells in order to uh, in order to be able to plot it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select all the data and then i come up here to data text to columns and the text to columns allows me to split the text in one of these cells into two columns worth of data uh, we have a comma separating all of our data points so i'm going to select delimited and click next we, again, we have a, a comma separating the data, so I'm going to click on that and click Next, and then click Finish. And then you can see my, my data now is in uh, two columns, and we're ready to plot. Uh, you can see the, the first column has the curvature in radians per 10, uh, or, or radians times 10 to the negative 6, and our moment is in uh, units of kip feet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, insert a scatter plot. I'm going to use a, a straight line scatter plot. And um, you can show your points or you can't. I'll, I'll show the points. And we'll select our data. We'll select our x data, which will be our curvature. And our y data, which will be our moment. And we'll have our uh, moment versus curvature plot. Um, with this, then we can customize the customize our plot as we want. Uh, we can add our all of our units, and um, this would be our our final curve. So uh, that concludes this example problem.